Gotti Golovkin and Chocolatito Gonzalez both were victorious. The number one and number two pound for pound fighters in the world were uh, victorious on Saturday. And uh, I don't like to curse. And um, unlike other people, it's, it's not hard for me not to curse. Well, I might curse in this video, and if I do, forgive me, everybody, because um, I've been in the game for a while. I mean, I've watched boxing over over 30 years, and um, and I, I know enough history to know uh, things that have happened ahead of time and I'm, I'm kind of sick of these new jacks I'm actually a, a boxing journalist so it's not just part of this YouTube boxing community this YTBC or what, whatever you want to call it so I'm not a new jack um, and so I just I watch, I, I read stories, and I, I but I, I, I watch some of these YouTube videos, and I'm just, I'm hearing words like exposed and bums and and <sighs> let's start with Gennady Golovkin. I mean, he moves to 36 and 0, 33 knockouts, and um, Kell Brook. A good effort on his part drops to 36 and 1. And all I see is Golovkin looked terrible. He got his ass kicked. Brooke was handling him. Premature stoppage by the. First of all, it wasn't a premature stoppage by the referee, it, they threw the towel in. It was a corner stoppage. The referee saw the towel and he, he waved the fight off. Uh, Kell Brook's trainer has been with him who knows how long. He knows the kid. He's in the ring. He sees what's going on. He did the right thing. He saved the kid from more punishment. I think part of the problem is Gennady Golovkin has been so good at making decent and, and good fighters look below average at best or average at best that as soon as a guy gets a couple hits in lands a couple shots a few times people overreact and call him a bum call him a cherry picker call him overrated what do you expect Kelbrook to do lie down he's a world class fighter one of the best of course he's going to get his shots in. I mean, now, if he just came and laid down, then it's like, well, he's fighting a middleweight. I mean, he's fighting a welterweight. When before the fight, he's bigger than Golovkin. 30 days out, he's 176 pounds. Almost 20 pounds bigger than Golovkin. The seven-day weigh-in, he's still like eight pounds or whatever. And on fight night, He's the bigger man. So uh, kill kill all of that welterweight. And then people, oh, if Brooke would have did this, if Brooke would have did that, coulda, shoulda, woulda. But Brooke, Brooke kicked his butt. Brooke kicked his butt. But Brooke is in the hospital with a broken eye socket. And and it's an eye socket. It is it. it, it he could have a problem with his eye for the rest of his career. I mean, that's the, that's the kind of fighter Gennady Golovkin is. Look at Gabriel Rosado when he cut him up bad. Rosado's been getting cut <laughs> almost every fight since. So you never know. You never know. But then, you know, Golovkin, he and Chocolatito are overrated. And, and you know where that's coming from. It's coming from fanboys. 
you know who these fanboys are and who they're fanboys of. I mean, they'll understate Chocolatito and Golovkin's accomplishments and then they'll overstate guys like Terrence Crawford or Andre Ward's accomplishments. Look, they all have accomplishments, but it's like you understate guys that you don't like at the expense of overstating guys that you are just fan boys of. I don't have... Most of my favorite fighters are, are retired. I don't have any stake in particular fighters. I mean, I try to call it straight down the line. And um, if anything, I'm looking at the opposite. People are like, oh, the middleweights are going to step to him now. I can't wait till uh, Daniel Jacobs knocks him out. And Jacobs, he's, he's talking nonsense again, talking about he's been calling this guy out for a couple of years. And, but if they do fight, if Jacobs has the guts to actually get into the ring and fight Golovkin, um, he may land shots. He may buzz Golovkin. That's because that's what I expect from a world-class fighter. But in the end, he'll get knocked out. And then Billy Joe Saunders, oh my gosh, this guy is... What is it? Come fight a real middleweight and, and my corner doesn't have a towel or something like that. I mean, come on, dude. Whatever. I guess I respect Saul Canelo Alvarez for being a punk that he is and just running than, than talking a bunch of smack. Even though, he, I mean, he's, he's talked his share afterwards. Don't get me wrong, but I've never seen this in my life. I... I I mean, they're, they're fighters from the past who are rolling over in their grave because it's always a catch with this guy. And, and what's going to happen is, listen, Gennady Golovkin is no longer in his physical prime. He wasn't last year. He was no longer in his physical prime. So people are going to wait till he's 36, 37. They're going to step into the ring, and then he'll eventually he'll lose, I'm sure. And then everybody, see, he was a bum. I told you he wasn't all that good. Okay, whatever. I wish this, I mean, it's this, this, I'm not going to curse. I mean, I, this crap just needs to stop. Moving along to um, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, Carlos Cuadras. Uh, if you go back a couple of days, I picked Chocolatito Gonzalez by a close decision, maybe a split or a majority decision. Because I know what he's doing. He's taking the risk. Kel, everybody wants to give Kel Brook all, all the credit in the world for stepping in and taking a chance. Well, he took a $5 million chance. Let's, let's keep it real there. But it still was a chance he took. Got it in his hometown. Got all the advantages and got knocked the fuck out <laughs> um chocolatito gonzalez took the challenge i mean he didn't test himself at the weight he he went for the ultimate test and fought either the best or second best guy at that weight and new way might disagree but um he fought the best guy at the weight and gonzalez is now a champion in uh, four different weight classes. This is the fourth weight class. He's made history. Um, everybody wants to talk about this magic 49 and 0. The 49 and 0 record was at heavyweight, not super flyweight, and not welterweight. So when you talk about breaking or tying Marciano's record, it, unless you're a heavyweight and then you can look at Julio Cesar Chavez who was what 87 and 0 at one time so I mean you know 40 what is 49 um I don't know if Chocolatito can do it because he's already 29 years old and when you're fighting at weight classes like 105 <laughs> you know what I mean 115 
112, 108, what, what have you. When you're fighting at those weight classes, age 29 is like old man territory. I mean, you, you're like the equivalent of a guy who's maybe 36. And it began to show he took some shots. He got beat up. Um, he had to work hard for his victory. So his face was swollen up. And everybody, well, he got beat up. He should have lost. Well, see, you can't say that in that fight and then say that Brooke was kicking Golovkin's butt in the next fight when you look at Brooke's face. You, understand? you see where I'm drawing the, the comparison? It's a, it's, a, it's a Golovkin and Chocolatito hate fest. You're saying, look at Chocolatito's face. He got beat up. He should have lost. And then you say Kell Brook was kicking Golovkin's butt. Well, how about looking at Kell Brook's eye and the fact that something's broken there? I mean, come on, come on, come on. I mean, keep keep it keep it real with me. <laughs> so uh, both guys remain undefeated. Both guys continue to make history, and. Um, Chocolatito, he, he he got some challenges at that weight class ahead. And at his, it looks like uh, the last couple of fights, I mean, you, you could say that against McWilliams Arroyo, he had problems making weight. And tonight, you can say that he took a lot of shots. But but this guy is, is, is he's like a cross between Hector Camacho and Ricardo Mayorga. I mean, he was in there with a, with a with an animal and um i thought it was closer than the nine to three or what have you on the score on one, at least one of the scorecards or eight to four um however however the body of work i believe the right fighter won a little closer the right guy won He took some shots. He gave some shots. Did you see all that acne on Quadris's uh, back? I, I'm still a little skeptical there, but uh, I mean a lot of acne, and uh, I'll just leave it at that. Boxing journalist, analyst, and you know, those of you who break down video, you guys listen. I, I, it's tough to give people credit who you don't like. I get that. Then don't give them credit. But when you take away from them, and s s calling them exposed and suspect, I, I just can't buy that. If anything, I'm looking at it the opposite way. I'm looking at Golovkin like, man, I don't see this guy losing in the next couple of years, losing until he's 36. I just don't see it. As, as unimpressed as people were who say he was exposed and I think Canelo and uh, Daniel Jacobs who has uh, I think 12 straight knockouts himself could beat him just based on what they saw against the welterweight a guy that you keep wanting to call a welterweight um, I was that much the opposite and impressed by what he did I mean, he showed me something tonight. I, I, I'd steer clear. See, a lot of people's confidence are going to go up now. A lot of people's kind, of, and maybe he'll, maybe they'll start stepping in and fighting Golovkin. But I'm looking at it the opposite way. Like, I'd be running now. I mean, if you think he was scary, and, and I know people are not going to see it this way. If you think he was scary before this fight, people are looking at him now like, oh, Brooke exposed him. Oh, yeah. Nah, man. He, he's he's a machine. The fact that Brooke got all of those hits in that everybody wants to kind of over. If anything, it was more Golovkin's sloppiness and trying to go for the kill than being the patient guy who uh, and not not as wild as uh, he was tonight. Being the patient guy, stalking that part he, he still did, but it, it just seemed like he was just. 
a little wild and a little off and all over the place. But as much as people want to talk about Brooke landing shots that didn't even hurt the guy, it, the fight lasted five, less than five rounds. I mean, and it was the corner that had mercy on their fighter. But he's been exposed? Really? Okay, I'll give you one thing. He was a little susceptible to the uppercut. Always has been. But he's never been down. He's never been stopped. I don't get it. It's, it's like, what does this guy have to do? He'll knock Jacobs out and then they'll say, well... Then all the amnesia will be going in and everybody will remember that Jacobs got stopped by uh, Dimitri Pirov. He'll beat uh, BJ Saunders and everybody will say, well, who's, who's he? He'll beat Saul Canelo Alvarez and then you'll say, well, Canelo was never a middleweight. Hey, l listen. Canelo, Saul Canelo Alvarez has outweighed Gennady Golovkin on fight night in every fight that he's had above 154 pounds except I think one so and and, and counting because in the Liam Smith fight I don't care that it's at 154 he will probably come in at 172 or something like that which is more than Golovkin weighed Tonight, or Saturday night, I won't say tonight because I might post this in the morning on Sunday, Sunday afternoon or something like that. Um, because if part of being the IBF champion, the IBF has a rule that says on the day of the fight, you can't weigh more than 10 pounds um, over the uh, limit which would be 170. So when you see Saul Canelo Alvarez doing 172, 173, whatever, understand that he's going to weigh more. You know, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say about you people out there. I really don't. Um, I'll post a picture of what I believe is the uh, x-ray of... Uh, Kell Brook's eye socket. I mean, the fact that it's been made available, just, I guess it's Team Brook looking for some sympathy or um, Brook's trainer looking to keep his job and saying, well, let me post this. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't care. Brook got stopped. Deal with it. All y'all calling for the upset who are now saying, oh, well, he got exposed. I mean, if you ever go to Atlantic City, they have the boardwalk and then like perpendicular to the boardwalk they have these piers that go out to the water and people sometimes people take a fishing rod and sit with their feet dangling on the pier and throw the fishing rod out hoping to catch something and then some people just walk walk on the pier to look at the ocean for all of you uh, Gennady Golovkin and, and even you Chocolatito Gonzalez haters Next time you go to Atlantic City or, or to any beach, I want you to find a short pier and take a long walk. 